and welcome everybody to a brand new episode of Crush This Nitro Hour. My name is Brad Shaw, and with me as always is Mr. Dalton Hastings. Dalton, how's it going, buddy? Uh, kind of exhausted from working, but uh, good to be back once again. This is, you know, so strange. It's like from our first episode, it kind of took a while, but now we're right back into it. We're right back into it again. It feels like, feels like yesterday we just did another one. Yeah, well, hey. We want to get these episodes out and about, and this episode is a real special one for me. This is one of my favorite, favorite races of all time, the 1994 NHRA Slick 50 Nationals from Houston, Texas. Oh, um, good God. You, you know, besides the obvious about this race, it's like we're, we're still in the beginning of the 94 season, so this should be a great race to cover from March of 1994. There's a lot going on in the world of drag racing, but we'll get into all that. Well, the cool thing about this race is it's part of one of my favorite eras, the 90s. Uh, a lot of the things with this season are, are very interesting because, you know, with, with this season, I believe this was uh, either the second season, I believe that Scott Jeffrey on was driving for uh, Wayne County Speed Shop for the Dodge Boys. He used to drive I, for Warren Johnson. So I believe this is his first or second season in that car. I believe it's the uh, first season because I know in '95 he also drove for them, but and also I believe in '93 he kind of drove for himself before going to the Dodge guys. But I, I want to say I want to say he drove for himself for about a year or so before joining the uh, Dodge guys. And, and this race is in the last season of Don the Snake Perdome, the last season Don ever raced. So the Snake Strike Tour, the Snake Strike Tour. He he desperately wanted to finish out the year with 50 victories. He did very well. He did very well. And actually, kind of a little bit of a precursor here when we get into 95, this is the last year as Larry Dixon with the crew chief. Larry Dixon's crew chief, and then the next year he drives for Don Perdome. Well, without further ado, let's get into it. Press play. Three, two, one, click. Here we go. Alrighty. Uh, speaking of speaking of the Dodge guys, there's Daryl Alderman, and there's Jeffrey on. Now, we mentioned in the last episode with the Noble Showdown that you love the ESPN intros. The, this this is the era that I love. This is the, this is the OG of ESPN. This is the original Speed World. Like, even just I'm not talking like like you, that era, but like. Like the announcers, everything about yep. this is just like it, it's it's all Dave McClellan in the booth, and every now and then you'll see Steve Evans at the bottom. But take a look at these highlights here. We're all the way back in Pomona, Warren Johnson, and now we're in Phoenix. This was also during the time that Phoenix became the second stop of the NHRA tour instead of becoming the second to last stop because that would have been the dead dead. Uh, that would have been like towards the end of the summertime going into the fall. So they decided to put it at the very beginning or towards the very end of the winter, which I think is a better move. God, Firebird, such a great track. There's the man right there. The Professor Warren Johnson. Oh, this was the second season. This was the second season of Jeffrey on. Because Daryl okay. Alderman was able to come back in the 94 season after his suspension. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Here, here's the intro. Oh my god. L look at this. Th like, th 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 I know that once when they had the newer Speed World by '97, '98, they had their own separate intros, but nothing ever beats this. We are here from Houston Raceway Park. God, what a good track. You got Dave McClellan once again doing the announcing. As I'll say, one of the most famous voices of the NHRA. Probably, like, uh, it's it's a debate between who's better, him or Steve Evans. But uh, honestly, I, I have to give it to Dave. I have to give it to Dave. I, I got to go Steve Evans in for me just because, you know, Steve Evans, is for me, is one of the you know most iconic voices of the oh, NHRA. No. Oh, oh, no, definitely. Like, I, I prefer Steve Evans in all forms of motorsports. But anytime when you think of NHRA, you always think of Dave McClellan. Any form of motorsport Steve Evans can cover. I mean, if you go back to the American Sports Cavalcade days of him covering Supercross, Monster Trucks, and all that stuff, he could do it all. But anybody who knows what NHRA is about is definitely Dave McClellan. And speaking oh. of which, there he is. Oh, mustacheless. Man. 
the 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 thing with Steve Evans, he was a heavy smoker from what I was from oh, what I oh, remembered. Yep. yep, yep, he was. There's a couple of videos out there of him smoking, like uh, th- there's like an old drag racing uh, video of him, and look at this. Daryl Alderman in the points lead after uh, race number two. Which I know that video that you're referencing, it's called American Nitro. I have a copy yep. of it. Yep, because it shows him in the booth and all that stuff. Yep, I actually have that. I'd love to do like a review on that one eventually. I like wouldn't a, mind that. It, it's such an old school. And there he is, the 93 Pro Sock champ. A little, bit of a, a little bit of a trivia question here for you. When did uh, Warren Johnson win his first Winston title? I believe it was 92. Yep. He won seven races that year. Seven races that year, and all he had to do was just basically qualify at the Chief Nationals. And there's the young one. Cool story. Um, I actually didn't meet Warren Johnson, but I got to see him work on his car at Bristol in 05. I was like, holy crap, there's Warren Johnson. Whoa. It was kind of one of those like surreal moments. And there he is. To prove that, you know, we could still 90 and 91 yeah, Pro Sock champ. D- you know what's funny? I was just recently watching Drag Racing 91 a couple of uh, weeks back, and at the very beginning, they talk about Daryl Alderman being the 1990 Pro Stock champion, John Ford being the 90 Funny Car champion, and Joe Amato being the 90 Top Fuel champion. But on the bottom where they had their little uh, taglines that said 91 Pro Stock, 91 Funny Car, and 91 Top Fuel champs. <laughs> how, how appropriate because they ended up clinching those titles that year. Yep. Oh, Bob Fry, another great Bob voice. Bob Fry, what a great guy. Oh, uh, yep, Scott Coletta. This was his second year returning to Top Fuel. And Ed the Ace McCullough. Yep. No matter what, I'll always remember him as the McDonald's top fuel driver. Yep. He was, he, that was him before Corey Mack. And actually, a little bit of a fun fact here. The very first guy to run four second times at 1,000 feet, you're looking at him right now. Scott Coletta did it in this race. And there is the crew guy, Dick LaHaye. One of the best crew chiefs ever. Oh, definitely. Think about winning the race, but you got to take it one round at a time, and that's our main objective right now. It's 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 so amazing to think that he ended up becoming. I believe he became Tony Schumacher's crew guy for a while. Possibly. Do you, do you remember who Dick's crew chief was when Dick ran? Kim LaHaye. Yeah, his daughter. She tried racing for a while, but she didn't really have the. I don't want to say the best of luck that her dad did, but it's but it's safe to say that she didn't really. She had the urge to race, but she didn't really do that good as her dad did. I'm just going to say, those uh, camera shots from the helicopter, nothing beats those. Oh, no! I wish they'd bring them back. I wish they would bring them back. Like, FS1 or whoever needs to look back at these old episodes and be like, okay, this is how we should present an HRA. Even, um, even the blimp cam. Bring the blimp cam back. Oh, here they come. They got pro stocks kicking off. Tricky Ricky Smith. Oh, we're going to go back to... Oh, nope, they actually cut the commercials this time. Oh, Mark Martin. Mark Martin. One of the greatest of all time in the NASCAR world. Even just the burnouts, even with the pro stalkers, were so good. It's such a shame, though, that, like... uh, I, I know I know that the pro stock guys can't go as, like, fast as the top fuel guys, but still, they do such great burnouts. Ricky Smith and uh, Curtin Johnson. The only thing I didn't like about, uh, because every now and then they would do this, like whenever they would show like the driver bio, they never showed what car they would run. Yeah. Because a lot of the times they would do that on certain shows, but this one, it's like, eh, we'll leave it out. Well, let's see here. Look at the grand. Just look at the grandstands. Look at all the people just sitting by the fence. We got Let's Kurt Johnson. See. Let's see. Ricky Smith's always good on the late. Nobody has moved. <laughs> well, we already have a precursor. Look at Buster Couch just waiting. I don't know why. Oh, Ricky might have waited too long there. Let's see. Oh, he's got the edge. 
Wow. Can't beat that Johnson horsepower. It's amazing to think that they weren't even running six second times, but yet it looks like that they're going that quick. Oh, Larry Morgan. I forgot Castro owned Super Clean at one point. I'll always remember Larry Morgan as the as the Castro Pro Stock driver. The Super Clean is okay, but I'll always remember the Castro GTX one. Oh yeah. Well, because though those Castro cars were just iconic. Oh my God, definitely. See, the, 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 this stuff right here. Yeah, it, it's a normal pre-taped interview and all that stuff, but it, it just makes the episode so much better. Like, look at the old safety safari vehicles. Yep. Oh, my God. Look at the van. The van with the jet dryer on the back. Hey, fire suit matches the car. Daryl Alderman. Such a legend. He drove for up until the, the 2000s. Because I... I do know that um, Scott Jeffreyon drove until he unfortunately passed away, and that was about a little over a decade ago. Yeah. We're currently in round two of the Pro Stock, guys. Yeah. This right here is just like the, uh, like the classics of what NHRA drag racing should be. Why do you like, think this is my favorite era? Like, this is when... The broadcasts were the best. Like, nothing... Like, oh, yeah. The, the 2000s era was great, but nothing like this stuff. And like, Daryl Alderman, just domination, like always. Oh, the, you see, anytime when a pro stock guy breaks, like, I always feel so bad, because it's like, you can see them going really, really quick. Oh, there he is, Scott Jeffrey on. And you Mark can, the Cowboy Powick. You can see him go quick, but then it's like, no, we're just going to slow down. Man, there's nothing like it. Auto light. Oh, the old school auto Eddie light. Eddie Hill! Eddie Hill, there he is! Eddie the Thrill Hill. I would have loved to have met him one day. I know he, I know he's currently retired right now, and plus he's gotta be he's gotta be in his seventies uh, right now or his eighties. Well, he still races like road course stuff. Oh oh definitely, I know that, but it's like just the fact that he's still going is unbelievable. No, it wasn't. Uh, you know, the first round we went left real bad. We had 15-inch rims on it. We put 16-inch rims on it. And it really hooked that up. That thick southern accent. Yeah. In second gear there, I knew it was on a heck of a pass. Heck of a pass. I calls that pretty dodge they cheap. Well, you know, I think Scott and I probably have some uh, names for the Oldsmobiles, too. <laughs> Put it in four-wheel drive and go. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, TK, once it goes back, take a look at uh, the paint scheme of the Summit Car. That is just, oh. About to, uh, about to bring you back to an old, uh, about, to, about to bring you back here to an old guy here. Remember Greg Adams, the Summit Truck Style Ford? Oh, yeah. Anytime when I see a car that has Summit on it, I automatically think of, like, the Summit truck style. Even though that was later on in the 2000s. I think about nothing... that man, Mark Powick. And there he is. Rest in peace. Yeah. I'll always remember the race. It was at English Town. It was during his birthday week or whatever. And he wins a round race. And Bob Fry says in the booth, you want to know what's even weirder than Scott Jeffrey on winning Steve Evans singing? And then, ah. it cuts to, and then it cuts to Steve Evans. Happy birthday to Scott. <laughs> Let's see. Ooh, see, I'd love, I'd, Powell I'd love... the, ooh, Powell almost in the center line. And it's Jeffrey on. I'd love to see Greg Anderson or Jason Lyon run an old school summit scheme just once. You know, it's so funny. I even thought about when you said to run like a throwback event. They need to do that. They do it for Darlington. They might as well do it for some of the NHRA guys. It would it would make <laughs> so much sense, like especially like Halloween weekend. You know, they normally have Vegas, so why not? You know, like it would be it would be perfect. Wow, look at that! Two career wins at this point, and Scott started racing in 1987. Yep. 
So much parity between these two cars in the Wayne County camp. So within, so within nearly eight years, you got two wins. But then again, look at John Force. It took John Force over a decade to get his first. Where did his first win come? In Montreal. Yep, San Air in Canada. So Canada can claim John Force's first victory. Oh, God. <laughs> All righty, we got Jim Yates Jim here Yates. versus WJ. Warren Johnson. The professor of pro stock. Look at that. If you saw in the background that there was a pro stock motorcycle. God, look at this. Before the McDonald's sponsorship the next year. Who knew what that man would accomplish with especially Dick Mask and power? It's, I don't want to say it's a shame, but to think that when Joe Gibbs in the NHRA world, he only won two championships and it was in pro stock. He had a great shot with Corey McLennathan, but for some reason, Corey McLennathan either kept doing so well and either lost a lot, or he lost a lot but then ended up winning a lot and didn't and didn't regain it. You know what I mean? Warren Johnson with the slight advantage coming out of the hole. And it's WJ. WJ right down Broadway. I know you'll appreciate that, Sam. <laughs> so if only we could get Bob Fry on this. That'd be epic. Bob Fry is like one of my favorites. You remember the and they walked away? Oh yeah. He did and they walked away extreme. And I have all three copies, one, two, and three. Literally any time when I hear it, it just brings me back to when I was a kid. What a close race. Wow. Look at that. And WJ even pulls out the parachute right towards the end. Look at this. We have we have Johnson versus Dodge in both final four matches. That is incredible. Oh, man. So there could be a chance that we can get, you know, Dodge versus Dodge, Oldsmobile versus Oldsmobile. Finals, that's all that matters. Uh, you can't uh, win a race until you uh, get one round at a time. Been a lot of lane jockeying going on back there, though. Yeah, there's been some oil downs out there. You hear the pro stock motorcycles in the background. Yep. And the sad thing is, they're going to completely skip over it and head and head to the nitro category. There's nothing wrong with that, my friend. Oh no, definitely. Ooh. Oh, I remember this. He, he blew a tire badly. Maybe the old school bud hat. Kenny Bernstein would be happy about that. Alright, here we go. Here they come. Oh, that sound. Just listen to the burnout. Oh my god. Mike Dunn in the Daryl Gwen car. I actually have Daryl Gwen's 1990 Cords Extra Light car hanging up on my window. Dude, just, just, oh, like I said in the last episode, the broadcast today don't hold a candle to this. The, no. the audio quality, the, the, just everything about it. Just listen to the, just listen to the cackle of the car from back then. They don't even do that long of burnouts now. Because the cars have so much power. During this time, they only had about, like, I think maybe uh, 5,000 horsepower. Now they have close to 11,000. But there's nothing wrong with a nice tire roasting burnout. Oh, no, definitely. Hey, that's why I like Scott Palmer, because he still whacks the throttle in the pits. He still seats the clutch properly. Look at the old Eddie Hill car. This would have been, I believe this was the final season for the old nuclear banana. Yep. Man, that, that car has seen so much history. Got the first four second pass in NHRA history and IHRA. Conrad Kalitta. Yep. Actually, a little bit of a trivia here for you. Which came first? The IHRA four second or NHRA? The IHRA. Yep. And ironically enough, it was in Houston both times. Yep. Let's see. Ooh, wheel stand by Scott. Oh, there go the cylinders for Mike Dunn as Scott Coletta goes down Broadway. Oh, no, it's Connie. Yeah, it was Connie. 
Hey, I thought it was Scott. He, 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 no, it was Connie. Ah, uh, uh, Tim Richards. Connie, I, mean, win or lose, he makes it enjoyable. I think this is like one of the seasons. Because uh, Tim Richards, uh, who was he? he? This is before he went to uh, work with... Um, um, uh, Chuck Etchells. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because he was predominantly with Chuck Etchells for a long time, too, so... It's interesting to see some of these old crew chiefs and, like, how many people have been with who. God, look at that. Lazy eye and all. <laughs> I love Connie, though. He's so cool. Oh, yeah. I, that's a guy I'd love to meet. The front wing we got on the car helps it quite a bit. It'll pull it right down. Happy with the 480? Yeah, yeah. By the way, fans, sorry if, you, sorry if you hear chewing. I'm eating while I'm watching this, so deal with oh, yeah. it. I already got I already got a uh, bag of candy corn and a bag of chips over here. Oh, there he is. By the way, fun fact here, this would have been the first season where they brought back the old wheels. Oh, yeah, the skinny's up in the front. Meanwhile, Eddie Hill still had, like, the little training wheels. The airplane wheels. Yep. God, just listen to that. Ninety percent nitro sounds so good. And there's Corey. Fun fact or sad fact: Corey McLeodathan is going to run the last three races of the NHRA season this year. It's going to be his last three races, and then he's done. Hey, you know what though? Corey has done it all. Corey has done it all. I mean, yeah, sure, he had, he didn't win a title, but he deserves to hang it up. He's and done it all. And who's sponsoring him? Look at the front nose of the car. That name, Larry Miner. That name is yep. going to be adorned on that top fielder for the last three races once again. Lee Beard, what a great mind. Every time when I think of Lee Beard, I think of Gary Ormsby. Yeah. All right, let's see here. Uh, wow, what a launch. And Prudhomme, ooh, that was close, but I believe, ooh. yep, Don Prudhomme got him. By a whole shot, too. That was great. Watch. By a whole shot, that's rare. Even even the wheels up by Cor McClendon almost got him. God, just look at, and look at that. And look closely at Perdome's car. He's losing cylinders. He was he dropping it. it. By a nose. Now you know why they call him the snake. Your 87 beat his 84. Uh, just lucky. Just lucky. They're running better than us right now. This See, 46 is, career yeah. national yeah. event win. He wanted that 50. You never know what happens. You change lanes just before the race. Yeah, we've been oh, and how how many has John Force have now? <laughs> uh, 151. <laughs> That's crazy to think. The final strike tour will not be a cruise. It's serious. No, it's big time serious. Trust me. I I don't want to go out a loser on this tour. So, uh, you know, Wes Cerny, whole school band of crew, they're doing a hell of a job. Wes Cerny, that's another name. Wes Cerny, what a name. There's Jimmy Proc. The final season for this um, Valvoline painted up car. I always call that design the Mark Martin design because the next year he would switch up to a whole entirely different paint job. Rads McDaniel. That's an old name. Here's a crash that's from all the And They Walked Away series. Both. Oh. To take a quote from uh, one of the races that a uh, similar incident happened to Shelly Anderson, um, he, he was riding a trike for the first time in his life for a long time. A powerful strike. Look at the old aviators that he has on. With the like weird tint. So I just kind of didn't want to try and stop it on the track. I just kind of closed it through and then I hit the fuel shut off. And you'll be back. I think we'll be back. Yeah, we got the parts and my boys will fix it. As long as there's no frame damage and it looks like it's good. 
I don't see any frame damage. Nope. Maybe some brain damage. <laughs> I had to. God, just look at Buster Couch in his old hat. In his like, it's like his natural habitat. R.I.P. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Ooh. God, look at that view. Cylinder so out. And a cylinder out, but he still manages to get the victory. See, the one... Go ahead. I was going to say, the one thing I love is just seeing, like, the little air vapors coming off the rear wing. <laughs> There's Scott. That was Kurt. Oh, I was going to say, that was Kurt. There's Scott. Speaking of Shelly there, Anderson. There she is. Uh, what a beauty. Let's count the tires on this car. One, two, yeah, they're all there. <laughs> God, Steve Evans is such a is such a class act. Yeah, well, it's it's loose down the end. You know, that's what his track's been all weekend. You know, we ran three oh three. It was just like that. We'll take it. A win light is a win light. Uh, it's amazing to think that within the first three seasons of the nineties. Oh, right here, ESPN update. First round for the team to come back. Ah. For anybody who was born around this time, any time when they would uh show NHRA stuff or whatever, they would always have uh, ESPN updates and they would go over scores of recent games. Yeah. Again, I gotta say it, that sound, like, God. There's Dick. Oh, yep, another thing that they used to do as well. If you broke a national record or at least a track record, you had to run again within 1% just to back it up. They don't do that now. They don't do that now. It's like if you break the record, the record's yours right then and there. I think the, they should go back to the, that old style just because it, it's oh, more yeah. tricky. Yeah, but because think about it. Like, you run, think hits if you're at 1,000 feet. You run like a 3.4 second pass in a top fuel car. Yeah, you did it for the first time and God knows how long. But, oh. The deep stage is... Oh, oh, unbelievable. Man. What a run. Poor Shelly Anderson. She's going to be disqualified no matter what. But what a run. A 903 at 80 miles an hour. That's not bad. Gee, a 903. Not exactly what we had in the game plan, huh? Well, not really. But, you know, when you're running as quick as we're running and so forth, we're walking a real fine line there. And there was a possibility that it would smoke the tires, but we felt as though we could get it down the Just race put track. too much power, too much clutch in it. record up and win the round. And, you know, I mean, you're trying to do everything at one time, right? You know, this is coming off of one of the best seasons Scott Coletta had uh, at Topeka, where he ran, I believe, 307 miles an hour. To, to think about it, like, this is two years after Kenny Bernstein ran the first 300. Yep. In Gainesville. Just, oh, there? man. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, all right. So I was just watching intently for a second. <laughs> no, nah, but, and you know what's funny? Uh, oh, look at this. Father and son. Who's going to lay down for who? And two old veterans. I always used I always love Scott Kalita's interviews. I, I See, right here. Fastest top fuel speed, 308. Just think, back in 1993 and 94, you running 308 miles an hour, do you know how rare that would have been? That, that, that's insane. Now, today, they're, they're running, like, way past that. Yep, 330 at, at 1,000 feet. Doing some work on the old WJ Pro Stalker. I don't want to say that that's way too quick, but I feel like that they need to find a way to slow the cars down just a little bit. Just go back to th go back to 1320. Oh, look at this, Larry Miner. Ah, oh, they're, right. they're taking everything down. 
the plastic flat, the yes, plastic fantastic, the, the fabulous the floppers. floppers. There's Mark Oswald. This is Mark Oswald, the In and Out Burger Penn Hall International car, tuned by Bill Schultz. His competition. Okay, quick quiz for you. Who did uh, Mark Oswald originally drive for? Oh my god. And who was the sponsor? Oh my god, you got me there. I was just watching a race from 1990 about him. The Candies and Hughes team. Candies and Hughes, that's right. God, how can I forget that? Ran the uh, motorcraft scheme. Yep. I'll never forget his big boomer at Dallas in 1990. So right here, he's actually driving a Dodge. Back then, he was a Ford guy. Then we got Gary Denjum. Wow. The school teacher. Who would end up joining John Force in 2001. Yeah. And would win the U.S. Nationals a couple of years later. Let's see here. I'm going Oswald on this, just performance-wise. I'm a Dark Horse guy. I got Denchum. Oh, no. Denchum's out right now. Oh! Yes! I do it! Oh, man. <laughs> that was great. Got some damage, though. By the way, folks, I know that this episode is 25 years old, but it's just two geeks having fun. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Two of those timing blocks. Oh, there he is. There he is. One of the legends of funny car racing, Al Hoffman. Atomic Al Hoffman. Who's he up against? It's nice to talk to you again. It's been a while. Oh, I know. Looks the exact same today. Oh, my God. Yeah, do, do you follow the... Um, uh, funny car, funny car YouTubers and all this stuff that do interviews with guys like John Forge, Gary Densham, and Gary Selzy. Oh yeah. Oh my God, they are so funny. Ooh, it's Tom Hoover. Two old veterans that going at it. Tom Hoover is one of my all-time favorites because the fact that his dad, rest in peace, always tuned the cars at such a very old age. Well, like you, you look at these two old veterans. It's like. You know, you you can never count out Tom Hoover. Never count him oh, out. Oh no, 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 no! You can never count out, count out Tom Hoover, because any time when you face off against Hoover, you had his dad constantly tuning the car and making it good. But there are also times too you had Tom Anderson with a guy like Al Hoffman. So yeah. Let's see here. Here they go. God, look at the smoke inside of there! Holy shit! All the clutch what a, dust. What a pass! And you got to think, this is before they are running those, like, shields that cover the driver's hands and everything. John Force was one of the first ones to have that, I think. Yep, he was the very first. And do I see John Force's car in the background, possibly? I believe so. You see the very, flames. Very fun fact, this was the final year he had an Oldsmobile before switching to a Pontiac in 95. Yep. And then a few years later, he'd be in the Ford camp for many years. Yep. And he also got into a lot of trouble with uh, driving a Ford. Now you don't need to thank Tom Anderson or any sponsors. They should all be thanking you. A whole shot won it. Well, I'm trying to do my job out here. I don't know where to run, but I know it's fun to find this again. <laughs> just look at how dirty he looks. And, uh, I know. I was just about to say that. Keeps coming back. I mean, but like I said, clutch dust. Look how messy his hair is, too. Yeah. Getting it all together here in the third race of this 1994 season. In the yep. area of God, it's amazing to think 1994 was that long ago. Oh, man. I was only... I was born in 91, so I was only like three. Two I wasn't three. even born yet. I wasn't even born yet. I would have been born the next August. There's Don Perdome. Do I spot a young Larry Dixon in there? Oh, yeah, right there. There he is with the flat top. <laughs> Not like the weird mullet he had in a previous season? Oh, my God. 
I was watching when Don Perdome won. I believe it was in 1989 at the U.S. Nationals. Larry Dixon's the only guy screaming and yelling. He's got he's got the mullet of all mullets. There he is, Roland Leong. Actually, no, the mullet of all mullets still belongs to James Hetfield. Don't get that twist. Oh come on. There's a major difference between a rock and roll band. There's, there's, there's a major difference between a rock and roll band and a crew chief for a nitro-methane vehicle. Still. But look at that. Roland Leong. Oh, here we go. Jim Epler versus Johnny Force. The man John Force desperately wanted to kill in Topeka in 93. Jim Epler ran the first 300-mile-an-hour pass. Okay. Here, here, here's a question for you. What kind of body style did Jim Epler first debut that was unlike anybody else in this certain era? Didn't he? He ran a Pontiac, didn't he? Nope. He ran a Corvette. Oh, yeah, that's right. In uh, 92, right? When he first won a race? No, no, no. This was later on. This is probably like around like 97, 98, 99. He ran a Corvette body. Oh, by the way, uh, keep your eye. Uh, I don't know if you saw that. Jim Epler got lucky on a red light with Casey Spurlock. Mike Clover. Mike Clover. He ended up crewing for Clay Milliken. He also crewed for um, Kristen Powell. And he's crewing for Clay Milliken again. Clay Milliken, such a great guy. Oh, look at that. Oh, my God. Look at that. Austin Coyle, John Force, everything about it. Bernie Federley. Let's see. I gotta go for us. Like I said, I'm an underdog here, so I gotta go with Epler. Ooh! Oh, John Redlighted! Oh, I forgot about the issues with this race. Yep. Because... Uh, so, okay, wait, wait, so for anybody who doesn't know, supposedly the electrical lines in uh, Jim Epler's ignition system always cause anybody who he ran against red light so anybody who ran up against jim epler in this race they would always get a red light because of the electrical wiring in jim epler's ignition system so whenever he went into the lights no matter who he ran against they would always get a red light see right there and they left the exact same time yep let's just listen in on this one i do not remember the last time john force red lighted what happened? You didn't know? You ain't seen a heart attack yet. I did. did yeah. I red lighted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just the interview is so good. I didn't see it. It must have been very close. I didn't see it. Sorry to I'm see you. Yeah. <laughs> we're just looking toward the next round. Well, I showed you Spurlock ain't the only one. It's part of the game, but what can I say to Castle and the boys at Jolly Rancher? I'm sorry, gang. Didn't know what happened. <laughs> Man, it's human. <laughs> oh, who cares? He ended up winning the championship that year anyway. <laughs> it's just the reaction. It's, just, it's so priceless. He had the same He had the same look on his face. Oh, my God. Chuck Etchell. What a great guy. Rest in peace. What, a, what an icon. The first four... No, the first... Yeah. No, yeah. The first four second guy in a funny car history. Gary Bolger. Yeah. You know what? They would run brand new clutch discs for John Forrest to break him in for him. Oh, here's your favorite. You can, uh, honestly, I love that old McDonald's design. It is so cool. Oh, I, I do. It's just I can I, I want to forget '92. But hey, John Forrest flipped his car to try to beat him. So. <laughs> But, uh, the sad thing is, you know, though, we're going up there ever to since 92, Cruz Petragon lost you know, everything. So we'll but hey, like, he came back to win a championship in, 2000... in 2008. Yeah. 2008, 2008, and then the next year. With... <laughs> I'm sorry, but just the fact that it, it, it just makes me laugh to this day. But with the 2009 U.S. Nationals, he got screwed out because John Ford laid down for Robert Height. God, just listen to that launch. Ooh, Bulger near the wall, but Etchell gets the best of him. But hey, you couldn't count out guys like 
the team of Joe Paisano and the Creasy Gang. You can't oh, no. count guys like that out. Oh, wow. Are you happy with that? Are you? Yeah, we're very happy right now. That's a little better. We've been I completely Medlin. forgot that he was part of Etchell's team. John Medlin before he went straight forth. And then to Don Schumacher. By the way, have you ever watched a little piece called John Force Still the One? Oh, yeah. Such a great, great piece, honestly. I think one thing we're going to have to do eventually is cover an IHRA event. Oh, I wouldn't mind that. I mean, I've never really... Um, I've always been strictly NHRA, but I wouldn't mind IHRA. He's still in, and that's who we got. But uh, your 18 is going to give you lane choice over now. Well, can't be happier. John Medlin and the crew are doing a great job, and we're just going to try, try and keep on moving. Man. And to think at this, and to think at this time, I believe Eric Medlin was still in high school, and then he ended up saying, "I don't want to go to college. I just want to wrench on the cards with you." Yep. God, look at all those haulers. Up. Here comes Kurt Johnson, and I believe it's Scott Jeffrey on. Yeah. And, you can, and look at that. You can see the sun already starting to go down. That's one of the greatest things about NHRA events. They start at, like, 11 o'clock-ish or so, and if there's no oil downs or anything like that, it'll it'll go by until probably, like, 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. But if there's, like, a lot of oil downs or if it's very early in the year, you get to watch it under the light. Such a great, great moment. There's nothing Any like time? there's nothing like nitro under under uh, nitro under the lights, man. I have got to see a NHRA event in person or any form. Like I've been to drag racing events, so I've never seen nitro. I've never seen a nitro car. Let's see here. By the way, fans, um, Dalton Dalton has like a surprise for me at the end of the episode, so we'll, 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 we'll see what he's he, he's gonna surprise okay. me with. Okay, like, um, let's just say you surprised me last week with this one. I, I I kept on saying to myself, let's see, Brad named the last one, so you know what? I'll name the next one. So then this way we can, cause. We don't want to keep it going, like, every couple of weeks and all this stuff. We actually want to, like, record the episodes as much as we can, so this way we can keep bringing out more content. And we also want your feedback, too. So if there's, like, a certain race you want to, you want us to cover within the NHRA of the 90s or even the 2000s, you know, let us know. We're pretty much open to anything. But right there, fans, we just saw Scott Jeffrey on taking out... Kurt Johnson to go to the finals of the 94 Slick 50 Nationals. Actually, let's uh, let's take a look at the calendar here and see. This would have been early March of 94. So let's take a look and see when this would have been. Let's see. This would have been, I believe, March 7th. No, nope, wait. March 6th of 1994. Well, did he? And let's see what's happening on in NASCAR during this time. Guys from Wayne County giving me the car to do it this year. Not that they didn't last year. Well, then we have another Warren Johnson car versus another Mopar car in the next race. So let's yep. see. By the way, at this particular time, March 6th of 94, Ernie Urban is winning the Pontiac Excitement 400 in Richmond. Let's see here. Here we go, WJ. God, I love that old Oldsmobile. I, 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 I'm sorry, I'm such a mark for the Oldsmobiles. I literally am. Oh yeah, I love the Oldsmobiles too. But there was a significant... Oh, Greg Anderson. Greg Anderson. Just listen to the idol of the old car. Oh man! Just listen to the idol. The idol is just god unbelievable. Well, and the Dodge Daytona then was such a shorter wheelbase than a lot of the other cars. Let's see here. I gotta go, WJ man. I gotta go with my gut. But McClellan just said one of the best lines: "The burnouts are over." So let's see what's gonna happen. 
history indicate to the driver where he is on the racetrack. The first one is a pre-stage light. That means he is just Let's a see few here. inches off. This, this is a rivalry with, like, a full episode on. Yep. Nobody is moving. Oh! Oh, look at this! WJ took forever to stage. And I believe WJ's got it. He has got it. Hey, just saying. Um, j just wait, fans. You, Dalton kind of hinted at something there, so <laughs> the reason that's the reason why I love this race. It's it's a good thing you you don't see Daryl's face. I am pretty sure he is steaming right now. We're pulling the gears. Now they row the gears. Oh, man, I cannot wait. Look at this one. Johnson has the lane choice over Scott Jeffrey on. Well, Warren, you saw what happened to Curtin. You dug down deep. 707, lane choice and all. Well, some days it goes your way, some days it doesn't. We just... 44 national event win. Oh, actually, a little trivia fact here for you. Who was the all-time national event win holder at this time in 94? I believe it was uh, uh, Bob Good. Yep. John Force didn't break his record until, I believe, 99 or 2000. Here oh, we go, father, father son. And son. Last time, I saw a father and son race in top fuel eliminator, and what a showdown this one's gonna be. There's some extra. Look at all the fans, man. Just oh. look at them lined up by the guardrail. Like, yeah, you get massive crowd today, but I don't think anything like this on National Drag Show. I wish, like, I could have been old enough for this. Okay, funny story about National Dragster. So I was very sick as a, as a baby growing up. And uh, my mom would find these National Dragsters in these hospitals. She would take them from the hospitals just for me to read at home. <laughs> I had a good I collection I, of them. I wish I had that type of luck. They had nothing like that whenever I went to the hospital. They had all kinds of people and TV guide shit. Part of my language. Part of my language. Hey, I was living in... I'm, I'm a Canadian too, so it was kind of harder to get that kind of stuff. This is the idol. The world. That blower is going. Sounds like a tea kettle. A very, very powerful tea kettle. There's the ESP update now. Yep, let's see. What do we got here? Pain relieving rub. What a way of putting it. <laughs> Illinois and Purdue. Florida versus Kentucky. South Mississippi? That's what that says? Alright, here we go. Father versus son. Oh, man. I want to go with Scott. Oh, wheels up by Connie again. Wow. Unbelievable. The quickest run, 474. A 474 at 293. That is just unbelievable. Great numbers. Punched out the old man and bragging rights to you for this race. Well, it's to the whole team, you know, it's just for the Coletta deal and the American International Airways. And this is a two car team and we are working as a team and we're having a lot of fun. And that was the quickest side by side race in the history of drag racing. And we also backed up the national record at 472. <laughs> Listen to the motors in the background. One thing I want to also mention, listen to the music. Oh my god, the old Diamond P music from either um, Ad Rev or... Um, what the hell is that? First like? Tracks or whatever? Yep, First Track. No, First Com and Killer Track. See, I have, the, I have a couple of those. The Diamond P broadcasts are just so legitimate. Oh, always leaning over the road cage. Yep, page. always. <laughs> History of 74 to a 78. I miss Scott Kalita, man. He, I know, I do too. I remember where I was when I heard that he died. I would have been living, um, for people that live in the state of Massachusetts, you'll probably know this town. I was living in a town called the Cushnet. We were just getting ready to move, and I had heard that uh, he died. And I was familiar with the name Scott Coletta because my dad was a big Coletta fan. I was so devastated. Joe Amato have got to be talking to them 
All right, here we go. Don the Snake Perdome versus Joe, uh, Joe, Joe Amato. Amato. This is kind of a rematch to the uh, 93 or 92 uh, Winston Invitational. Okay, another pop quiz for you. Who was Joe Amato's little co-pilot that he was obsessed with? Snoopy. Yep. He loved Snoopy. He'd have he had Snoopy underwear and <laughs> there was an episode about it. Yep, yep. He also on some of his later cards he always ran a, a Snoopy design. Yep. Any card that Joe Amato ran, he always had to have Snoopy. It was his thing. Oh, by the way, did you know a couple of years ago, Joe Amato actually got his GED? He never even graduated from high school. Oh, really? Um, I, I, I shit you not. I read an article that said he got he recently got his GED. He, he, I guess he dropped out of high school when he was younger just to race. Safe to say he made a pretty good living. Oh, no! How do you red light? Oh, look at the parachute. Parachutes are fully out. Poor Joe Amato. Look at the difference of sponsors. Like, Skull Tobacco back in the day, man. Yep. I think right now the last thing on your mind is the time. The snake's going to the final. We're in the final. That's where we want to be. And we're yep, Wes Cerny. There he is. He's doing a great job, and we're just loving it. He wins too many of these. He might want to Look at the, like, old sponsors. Like, Pure Later wins. Pontiac. Yep. God. GMC truck. It, even the old tow vehicle. Who, by the way, did not qualify at this event. It'll be Prudhomme and Scott Coletta in the finals with the national record holder holding lane choice. The Vibe. Now, look at the old face mask he had to wear. Yeah. Final round. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's been a while, but, man, you know, I just want to thank, uh, you know, Skull and uh, Wes Cerny, all the guys in the crew, you know. I think they, if I remember correctly, they came out with a uh, Tom McEwen and uh, um, Don the Snake for Dome movie. Yeah, which I actually have it on Blu-ray. Is it a good one? No, I've yet it to is. See it. I enjoyed it. I've yet to see it, but I've always wanted to. Uh, Ron Caps makes a cameo in it. A couple other people make cameos in it. I'm not surprised that Caps does it. Caps is such, I, I, I forget Caps is such a down-to-earth guy. I forget who he played, actually, in it. He played a certain role. Final strike to her. What a moment this is early on in the 94 Actually, season. I'm going to keep this playing. Uh, I'm about to, about to look it up right now because now I'm kind of uh, – I'm kind of oh here they come the flopper. Here I'll I'll search it up here I got it I'm already up here. Snake and bone goose. Let's see here. Cast and crew IMDb. Yep snake and mongoose. Yeah. Let's see here. Ron Caps played a guy by the name of Lou Bainey. Tom McEwen and uh, Don Perdome both starred in it, in a way, too. Oh, uh, yeah? They both had roles. Alexis DeJoria was in it. Um, for anybody who knows who this man is, Jesse Williams is. Um, he is also on Grey's Anatomy. He plays Dr. Jackson Avery. So he was a pretty big name for that movie. There's Tom Anderson, and you can see the hat of Helen Hoffman. Yep, the old cowboy hat. So it's so strange looking at this body that Hoffman has, and then the next year he goes to a Pontiac. Yeah. Pre stage, stage, green. Here they go. God, look at the dust just everywhere. Hoffman goes right down Broadway at a 520 at 289. Slick 50 parachutes while the other one's just dragging. This man just went in the finals. You should be smiling. Yeah, we are. Oh, boy, Dalton, here we go. I, it's almost time for the reason why I love this race. Oh, my God. I can just imagine with only just like a couple moments from now. Oh, you fans are in for a treat. <laughs> can you say, um, burn down? Oh, yeah. You, you can say a major burn down. You can say what basically 94 in pro stock was about. 
Well, keep in mind, there's still one more funny car race to run. We still have uh, Jim Epler versus, I believe, Gary Dencham. Yeah. But I wanted to give the fans a little teaser of what we're talking about. <laughs> oh, look at those pipes. Just look at those pipes. Rug Doctor. Such a great sponsorship back then. Look at the side by side burnout. Weird body shake. Just listen. Listen to the idol. Oh man, I love Nitro. Oh, very funny little comment here. Can you imagine if they ran like collectors on a sound like that? That would be weird. <laughs> they have to run those types of pipes. I would love to hear it actually. Oh, come on. Don't be like those monster truck freaks that think that, uh, that, uh, that proclaim that, um, that if a truck doesn't run zoomies, it ruins the whole sound. I think that with these types of motors, they have to run the pipe. Because if you were to run just one strict pipe going down, or, you know, just one strict pipe going up like that, I don't know. I, I just don't think it would sound all that well. All I'm going to say is the header flames would look, would look probably, like, just amazing. Just one big flame. That would look so sick, though. Let's see. Send some stages. Oh! Another red light! Oh, goddamn electronics from Jim Epler! Of course a red, li a red light was nice! It is amazing to think that Jim Epler's only been doing this for two years. He won his very first race in 92. Honestly, John Force has never had any luck with rookies at Pomona. He never, yeah. He lost the case. Rookies and him were never good. He lost to Casey Spurlock in the first round at the Winter Nationals in 90, lost, and lost in the final round in 92 to Jim Epler. But he ended up winning the Winter Nationals in 93. Alrighty. I think he won it in 94, too. Oh, here we go. Oh, my God. I'm just really excited. I could, oh, sorry, no, Jim, no, 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 I, 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 could, I could care less about your interview right now. Oh, come on. You don't like the computer scientist turned uh, Nitro Racer? The only thing that I'm excited about is the Pro Stock Finals, baby. Oh. <laughs> Hoffman might be working with the practice tree just a bit. With Epler's luck, it could be. Steaming mad at dirt. Oh, here we go. <laughs> All right. All right, folks. I'm actually going to uh, try my best to not talk with this because this is one of Brad's favorite moments. Brad, I am going to let you take it from here because this is one of your favorite moments. I'll let you take it from here. I am getting goosebumps right now, fans. <laughs> this this rivalry this year started with this particular race. This is the best burn down of all time. Th th this sums up the 90s for NHRA for me, at least. This moment. I'm predominantly a Nitro... I'm predominantly a Nitro Methane racing fan, but... This made my love for Pro Stock. Like, oh my god. I am hype right now, fans. I am hype. Just, just let everybody know from what we're watching, 
in the what would be the right lane is Scott Jeffrey on, and in what would be the left lane is Warren Johnston. We now have Steve Evans talking to Scott Jeffrey on. About the brand new car coming. put together one fine looking car here. Ah, look at that. Me and Daryl are just salivating, waiting to get inside one of these race cars. A long deck on it. Oh, it's got a long deck on it, and the most important thing is it's 105 inches versus 99 inches, and uh, it's a little bit wider, but yet it's just as slippery in the wind tunnel. Actually, Stop talking about the car. The Get to the damn race. <laughs> uh, more excited guys over this here. gives me goosebumps, this race. That's the way it goes. Oh, here we go. They are pre-staged, everybody. Turn your clocks on, and let's do this. All right, wait. I got mine on right now. Watch Buster Couch. Watch Buster. They're just sitting there. And they continue to sit there. Remember, guys, <laughs> Scott Jeffreyon used to drive for Warren Johnson. You see, the cars just basically are idling. Listen oh. to the crowd. Listen to the crowd. Buster looking and making no move yet. He's like, nope, nope. Uh. A little bit. And then <laughs> it moves up. Move What's oh, my on? God. Put him in the beams, I would guess. Yes, that's the indication to stage the race car. <laughs> oh, man, this is so good. Story. Nobody is moving. Got Jeffrey on one. He's like, you know what, guys? Oh, no, nope, you're done. Get the beep off my starting line. I stopped my clock at. Go home. Go home. You guys are going to the sin bin. My clock stopped at 55.89. That is so good. Now there's there's been other burn downs, you know, with with you know that Larry been much Morgan. Longer. But just this one, just what it meant. Like the bad blood between these two teams. And the reasons are primarily psychological. One driver wants to stay. You got the funny car finals right in the back there. Oh, fired back up. I wonder what the funny car guys are even thinking about this. You'd never see this in funny car or whatever. You'd never see anything like this. The closest we got was uh, Doug Herbert and Clay Milliken one time. Yeah. Oh, rare dry hop. Oh, here we go. Can we get the clock back up again. Now, there's a quote from Warren Johnson that you'll hear that was like the statement. Here we go. Free stage. You got to remember, motors are Clock's hot. On. Clock's on right now. Here we go. Warren Johnson changes first. <laughs> Scott Jeffrey on second. Here we go, guys. You never see that with Warren Johnson. You never see him stay first. Almost a dead heat. And Warren, Warren Johnson, Johnson gets it. Gets the edge. Unbelievable. Oh, man. Now you guys see why this is my favorite race of all time. Oh, just wait for the interview. I, this is like yep. the reason, one of the other reasons you know why. You know what? Once when the interview comes about, let's just let everybody listen. Oh, yeah. I hope, I hope you have the volume turned up for people to listen to this. Uh, let me crank it here. Pulled up alongside and then at about a thousand feet, pulled past Scott Jeffrey on and at the finish line, the margin of Well, I can also overlay the audio in like oh, yeah, yeah. the show, yeah, so I probably will do that. Thousands of a second. Here we All right. go. We're, we're just not going to talk. We're just not going to talk. Here is probably the best interview Warren Johnson's life. It's one of the most dramatic races we have ever seen. Steve? I'm sure it was not either of your intentions, but you had this crowd absolutely berserk. We could hear him glue down here. Nah, the kid's just a jerk out there just trying to play his game. <laughs> he better learn how to drive a race car before he starts playing games like that. But it looked like both of you were playing the game. Either, anybody can stage at any time. Huh. I don't have to stage last or first. I'll stage when I'm ready. <laughs> oh, man. man. And he's hot. Oh, freaking great. Well, oh, God. And you can see they're starting to, to like... Got to Warren just a little bit. Jaw jacking each other there. <laughs> no, oh. they, should, they should have left the audio running so we could at least hear what they were saying. Just that quote. I don't have to stage first or last. I'll stage when I want to. And here come the funny cars. We're 
I really wish, well, the, the only person who I'd be able to ask this to is Jim Epler. Well, how did he feel after all that happened? God, look at that burnout. Back when the bodies actually looked like legitimate production vehicles. They still did years later on, but I, but I feel like after probably 2005, they didn't look like legit funny cars anymore. Oh, man, I, I just can't get over that pro stock final. <laughs> But that set the tone for the rest of the year. I believe Warren Johnson ended up winning the Pro Stock title that year, right? I believe so, yes. God, just listen, just listen to that tea kettle blower. Inside the race car, you're riding along with Al, and that is the view as they raise the body to make a final check of the engine. As Clover goes through the gyrations to get kept. Oh, just listen to that, fans. Oh. oh, my God. Winnebago. Winnebago oh, on the rear quarter panel of Jim Epler's car. And that scheme of Al Hoffman's is just legendary. Yep, I have that in diecast form on my shelf right now. There you go. Oh, red light! Look at the flame. A red light for Epler, so... Yeah. It comes in full circle. It comes in full circle. He has three red light victories. He red lights in the final. It's like what Dan McClellan said. You live by the sword, you die by the sword. Oh yeah, look at him. He left way too soon. Oh yeah. And he even went up in flame. He went up in tire smoke, so... He should have he tried doing the Hoffman trick. He should have tried going... He should have tried blurping the, the throttle. Just give me a little bit of money, and I can really run good if I have a chance to test and get the good parts. Now, this was just a beautiful team effort. And we only have one Anderson. more to go. The yeah. When you needed, he gave you a this is still one of my, even though John Force wasn't really in the finals, that would have made it, like, really the most the epic here. race ever, but Jim still. Epler, uh, I don't know what happened to him, but he redlined it. Well, he's a good, uh, he he's red good racer. He's here it's anyhow. It's so funny but, when uh, Steve just interrupts him. excited. The track was a little loose out there in the middle, and we've been trying to just fight with it. we got big horsepower in this car, and we're really looking forward to going on to a track down at Gainesville next race. I mean, we've been in uh, uh the Gator National for Slick Western Auto and Slick 50 and everybody involved. We're just so excited. Tom Honestly, if there chief, were to be anybody that say, could have I mean, broken John Forrest's record in the 90s uh, would definitely be Al Hoffman. Hoffman. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm just lost. My but he always had so such crappy luck. John so Forrest had a way of do. creating rivalries. The one that I remember a lot was uh, Forrest versus um, – uh, what was it, Jerry Tolliver? Yep, in 2000. Yep, because Tolliver had the old WWF thing and, you know, wanted to be a little bit of an attitude. And ironically enough, that very same year, uh, Jim Epler joined the WWF guys. Yep, so they ran like a Kane and Undertaker car, a Rock yep. and Stone Gold car. And there he is. Man, I'd love to see just like a remake of this car. I love the color burgundy, uh, the color of the car, like the burgundy color. So it's just yep. like, oh yeah. See, even the top feelers back then were doing shorter burnouts in the funny cars. Well, it's because the, the top fuel cards had more and more power, and, well, I mean, unless if you found a way to burp the throttle a bunch of times, you weren't going to get that much of a long burnout. You know what the strange thing is? I was watching a race from, I think it was the 80s or so. You saw uh, Eddie Hill constantly burping out flames whenever he was back in the car up and all stuff. Here, you don't see that. No, there... There is footage of, like, cars at night when they're idling just shooting flames. I don't know how they managed to do that. 100% nitro, basically. <laughs> you know, this era was either 90 or 75%, I believe. 
90. So, you know, cutting it with cutting it with methanol or whatever, that definitely would change the molecular complexion of it. But meanwhile, they go down they go down the racetrack at full full throttle. They activate the nitro right then and there, and man, does it look sweet. Do you know what the uh, chemical formulation is for nitromethane? Not really. I was never really the chemical-based person. I never took chemical class in high school. It is CH3NO2. Well, look at that. You learn something new every day. Yeah. Let's see. I'm gonna have to go with Perdome on this one. Oh, dude. Anybody can. It's a final strike tour. Let's see. Let's see the flames, too. God, look at those things! Ah, nice! Yes! Larry Dixon. Larry Dixon! There he is! Look how happy he is! What a great job! We've ever seen in top Damn two. straight! We loved it. <laughs> Unbelievable. We've had a wonderful day, and Don has just done a tremendous job driving. If he's going to retire this year, boy, the sport's losing one of the greatest ones. Don Prudhomme got the advantage. And Don Prudhomme would Scott end up retiring this line. year, and he wanted his goal to be 50 wins. He would only end up getting 49. Again, this the, is, listen, to that go music, listen to that music. Oh my god, it is so good. Just look at the flames. Look at the flames. Tickling the winds. And there he is. We need to try to find some of this music for an intro. Hey, I got plenty of them. I'll, I'll, send, I'll send some to you. Do it. <laughs> Yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm tickled to death. What can I say? It's been a long time, and, you know, the Lord who lets us today, you know, we didn't run the best, but, my God, I guess we just we just hung in there in West Cerny, all the guys. That, uh, it's the best race of the day was with Corey Mack, for sure, oh, when, you, yeah. when you were that snake. Yeah, well, you know, I just didn't want that kid to whip me off the starting line. That's all I could take. Again, Steve guys, Evans you know, just interrupting him as he talks. That is just so good. Wins, Pontiac, GM Truck, all the people that's hung in there with us, really appreciate it. Thanks again, man. This is a ball, I tell you. I may not quit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think Lynn Prudhomme, God's wife, wants to hear a Man, what a race. Oh, my God. Such a Joe great, Amato, great moment. And look at the point standings Scott, right there. But it's safe to say that number three would end up becoming number one throughout the whole year because uh, Scott Coletta would end up winning seven races that year. And now people realize why this is my favorite race. Valvoline, oh my god. People who know, use uh. Okay, what's the surprise that you have? Okay, okay, so I... Oh, look at this, look at this. Pro Bike Challenge on ESPN2. Okay. Now, hang on, let me uh, cut this out here. So, I kept on saying to myself... We we did his favorite race. I got plenty of favorite races. It was hard to label them down. I thought either the 1995 U.S. Nationals, which is one of my favorite U.S. Nationals. I then thought to myself, what about the 1996 Gator Nationals? I'm like, no. Our next episode that we are going to cover, because I know for a fact you're going to love me for this one. It's one of my all-time favorite races. We're going to stay in the Texas area. But we are going to Dallas in 1992, the NHRA Chief Auto Parts uh. Nationals in Dallas. My favorite race of all time, the funny car final between Cruz Petragon and John Force. Okay, I, I, I agree with this one, even though you know that's not my favorite season, but that race is legendary. <laughs> Literally... I, I kept on debating which one should we go for. My original plan was to go for the Gator Nationals in 96 because Blaine Johnson and Scott Coletta, that final round. But no, we have to do – we have to do the Chief Nationals. Okay. I'll, 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 I will raise you one up after that episode, I'll, okay? I'll, I'll name the next episode. We're, it, we're already planning ahead. We're already planning ahead, so – if your guy can find this, by the way, thanks to Dave W. for the footage for yep, this episode. Dave, 
Dave W., uh, uh, major shout-outs to him. He definitely, he's basically the guy to, uh, you know, talk to for all these types of shows. So, um, this is episode three. Episode four is going to be the 92 Chief Nationals. And episode number five is going to be... So, I believe in the 50th anniversary season of NHRA, there was three Pomona races. You had your typical beginning and ending... There was one in the middle of the season, which the was 50th the 50th anniversary national. Yes, I want to cover that. I can I can try to find that one, but um, I believe I have some stuff being sent over to me within the meantime. If if we if because we, one of the one of the events that I actually am getting the 1997 Houston pay per view. Ooh, that even though there's no way. We are going to be able to cover all of that stuff within God knows how long. That's like a seven and a half hour event. So, you know, we'll, we'll try to find some way with that. But I can definitely do some of the 2001 stuff. I'd have to talk with them about it. But if, but we, yeah, if, so. if we can't get that race, then it's going to be 1992 Gator Nationals. Oh, my God. You know what? I think we're better off sticking with the '90s right now. Yeah, let's, let's let's go the let's go the '92 Gator Nationals just because of Kenny Bernstein, the first 300 mile an hour run. Yep, it makes sense. Oh my God! Literally, uh, we have got like a we're only a couple of months into this thing, and we're art we already got five episodes planned out. And actually, let me do this right now. I am about to send you the Gator Nationals. Do I just that. sent. I just sent it to you, and I'm about to send you this one. Oh, okay. I can't wait to see what you sent me. But, fans, thank you for joining us for another episode. Thanks to Dave W. once again for getting this episode for us to to, to review and you know, give you guys our thoughts on it. Um, you know, Hopefully, we'll be overlaying the footage with the audio once like what we did with the last episode. Um, you know, again, thank you guys so much. And thank you to Dalton for, for be, being the co-host of this and, you know, for <laughs> being just an NHRA nerd like I am. Hey, honestly, I, honestly, I never even, in all my wildest dreams, I never thought I'd be able to do a podcast. So I'm glad to be doing it. Yep. All right, guys. Well, my name is Brad Shaw. And I'm Dalton Hastings. This has been Crush This and Nitro Hour, and always, as always say, blah, 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 I can't even speak right now. And, <laughs> and, and as we always say for Crush This, keep the rubber side down and the shiny side up, everybody. Peace.